and welcome to the second round of the TFR Super Cup, live from Road America. I'm just watching the end of qualifying at the minute. Well, it's just sorting itself out. We're at Road America in Wisconsin, Elk Hard Lake. We are going to be doing a 90 minute race. We have two classes of, dry, two classes of cars. We have the Ford GT in the GT3 class, and we've got the, or the GT2 class and the GT1s, or our lovely Corvettes. Just going to introduce a co-commentator, the lead commentator, Will Vincent. Very good evening, our time. Very good evening to you, Rob. How are you doing? Yeah, lovely, thanks. It's um, quite early. We had a quite interesting uh, practice and qualification running up. Um, we'll give you a quick rundown when the uh, cars go to grid, of what the, uh, what, the, what the order of racing is. It's been quite good fun. I think there's been a lot of sandbagging in, uh, in practice for a lot of slow people that have pulled a couple more seconds out of the hat in uh, qualification? Oh yeah, um, I mean we've had what over on the last couple of days, two six hour sessions, mm -hmm. then we've had the four hours today and it did look as though as soon as qualifying started people really started to you know, show what their true speed was when they were almost three four seconds behind coming into qualifying. Absolutely and there's been a lot of um, quite sort of friendly uh, helping of setups and helping of learning the circuits. And it's all been quite good. We are now five seconds away from gridding up. Okay, we're on grid. I'm going to let Will take you on through the... Uh, we're going to do a pace lap. We're going to let Will take you through the uh, order of classes. Order of cars. Yeah, and just before we continue, um, you will see already the counter is beginning to tick down on your screens. Um, the way it works is that that's a little bit out. We believe it's anywhere between about three and a half and four and a half minutes out. But we'll be letting you guys know throughout the race exactly how long there is left to go in the session from the second the green flag drops. Um, but as far as the Corvettes goes... John Maloney, the pole with a 159.779. Only three drivers managed to actually get into break that two-minute barrier. As I said, John Maloney's in first. A line, lining up alongside him in P number two is Oliver Brandt. And in third position is David S. Peterson. And some really good drivers, Rob, all the way through that GT field. The entire field separated by just under four seconds there. That is, that is very close. They were... Uh... About that time, there were a lot of 204s, a lot of 205s in practice, so they've really pulled the low fuel uh, setups out of the hat. And lining up alongside David in row number two is Farouk Manzar. Row number three will be David Ward in position number five and Gary Hickman in sixth. Seventh will be Ian Rogers, and alongside him is Neil Heckins. That will be in for a two minute one, first drive in the two minute ones. And row number five is Robert Lowry in number nine. And Just Van de Heuvel in 10th. And um, Christian Nilsson is in 11th with Bart Monin in 12th. Adam Keel in 13th. Kieran Pierce in 14th. Morgan Morand 15th. Philip Arf 16th. Carl McGurk in 17th. And Larry brings up the rear of the Corvette class. And that's excellent. And I'll do the, uh, the GT2 cars as the um, pace car pulls away. Kimo is in 19th, which is the first position for the GT2 cars. Toby is in second place. Peter is in third. Eric Veldoff is in fourth. Wieter Boonek is in fifth. David Jordan, two, is in sixth. It's quite confusing. Stephen Coppins, another uh, talk free racing driver, is in seventh. Dave Geimer of Team Shark. Ninth is Mark Burt. Tenth is Jasper. Eleventh is Simon Geimer, brother of David. And uh, I think nineteenth is David Kirsten. Fourteenth, Mario Vlasic. Fifteenth is Sasha Rubb. In sixteenth is Havard Espeland. We'll get down in the two oh sevens now. Two oh eight is Norbert and Chris Potter in thirty fourth, thirty fifth. In total, and Willem P Pienaar bringing up the back of the grid in 36. And I have to say though, Rob, um, Kimo did a tremendous job. He's only about, he's only 1.3, 1.3 seconds behind the slowest Corvette driver. So some real pressure in there in the 4GT, which is a considerably slower car over the course of a longer run. 
I tell you what, Kimo, Kimo is absolutely on it because I've been watching him in practice and he's been not that he's not been that quick in practice. And I was there thinking, I thought this guy was going to be really, really good. And uh, all of a sudden, the class is sort of. Uh, told itself out because he's he's now at the top and he's on pole again so fantastic racing it's going to be interesting to see how close he gets to uh to some of the corvettes when they when they come around to lap him oh yeah and let's not forget you know this is round two of the um spring championship and we're running aboard right now with um david peterson who is currently your points leader for the gt1 class having scored the win in the first race of the season and for David, it would be an interesting scenario. He'll want to really push, but he wouldn't want to get involved in anything that would ruin his race earlier on. Um, and Gary Hickman, who is third in the standings, is currently about three spots behind him. So um, we haven't unfortunately got Alexandra here today, but it's pretty close up top, and those guys aren't very far apart on the grid either. No, I tell you what, um, David. I was talking to David actually uh, beforehand, and he was on about few chaps in the uh, in the grid he's he was a champion from last year and uh, there's a new a lot of new drivers in this year and he's really really quite um, apprehensive about some of them because they are quick and he hasn't heard of them a lot so you can see the cars right now are coming through the kinks heading down towards Canada and this is going to be a really really interesting part of the track Rob um, very high speed a lot of commitment needed as you go through here and then a Big stop, probably your second biggest stop of the lap as you come into Canada Corner. So famously made so in case if you don't break you might actually end up in Canada. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, we're just about, oh, I think we've gone through the Bill Mitchell Bridge. Which is about to come up onto the start of this train. All soon, I think we'll run up to that now. So, as you've already mentioned, it's going to be a 90-minute race. It's a timed race here. Um, we've done our maths, and we believe you can pretty much do the entire race on two full tanks of fuel. However, it'll be interesting to see if some guys play the strategy card, see whether or not they'll you know, do two stops instead of one. It seems as though that you can do a two-stop strategy in about two-thirds of the time of doing one stop and see whether they, you know, it all settles down together. Well, let's be honest, Will, you did the maths. This all confused me. Um, so respect from that. They're all, uh, all the drivers are quite silent about what's going to go on. I think we're just going to go start. Green flag is in the air. We are green here at Road America, and the cars you can see already trying to single file it as much as they can. All of them until they get down to turn one by one. You don't want to be too aggressive too early on here. And you see Ian Rogers there just making a move, gaining one position at the start into sixth position. But so far, pretty clean all the way back, Rob. Well, I certainly don't see any drums in the GT field yet, which is good. Although, I believe Kimo is uh, side by side. They're all sort of grouped up behind the Corvettes. Obviously, there's not enough room yet. They've not managed to stretch themselves out enough. And this is where it gets into a big drag race, coming down to your first real big stop of the track. And you see a couple of drivers pulling out, trying to see whether they can get the draft to work in their favour as they come down towards the stop. Still very clean so far. TFR operates a really good policy on making sure that it is clean racing all the way through the field with drivers getting penalised if they do make too many aggressive moves and forcing drivers into um, what they call avoidable contact. Oh, absolutely, but in the same state, I don't think that um, I don't think that they want to uh, get too far up someone's um, someone's rear. You know, they're coming to the uh, real, real slow corners. So it's just to take a little easy in the early few laps. Make sure they don't have a, an incident soon into the race. And we did have a crash in turn four. I believe that is the 36 machine of Farouk Manzir, who is off track. And you also have Maloney off track as well. Sorry, we missed that earlier on. Yeah, certainly it's quite hard to keep up with um, 36 cars on the grid at the moment. Maloney is way see. back. You see him struggling to try and get back. I don't know if he's going to come down pit lane already. But he's only in the final corner. You can see the leader is pretty much already... Oh, sorry, I've got that completely wrong. Joe Maloney is already coming um, to complete lap number one. Completely confused myself there. But Simon Gamer is in pit lane by the look of it. And you also have a couple of other drivers trying to get repairs in pit road as we speak. Oh, absolutely, there's still plenty of, uh, plenty of racing left.
And Rob, now you've got that first lap out of the way, this is where, you know, a number of drivers are going to see how they are in comparison to the cars around them, see whether or not it's worth fighting for position earlier on, if they're just going to sit back, play the strategy game, see if they can save a little bit of fuel to push it later on, save their tyres. And I think this first part of the race is going to be, I wouldn't say subdued, but a lot less chaotic is as soon as we get past that first pit stop. Oh, no, absolutely. I think there's a... Uh and you can certainly see a lot of Ford GTs down the back of um, Morian Sweep. They're just uh, they're just trying to size each other up as well. A lot of them are running quite deep into corner number five. I think at the moment the camera is watching number 36 car of Farouk. And out front, John Maloney is leading by about six tenths of a second over Peterson at the moment. And in third place, you have. David Ward, I believe, at the, no, sorry, um, you have Farouk Manzara in third, David Ward in fourth, and the top three cars have almost broken away by about half a second to a second from David Ward there in that famous pink number 69 machine there. I love that team, big accident. Big accident, two and three off there. And that is the championship was leader Farouk. and, and Farouk David Manzara. Peterson, yes. And that was big contact there between the two of them. And, and now did... I think, I think Farouk lost that under braking and just took it, took someone out with him. Yeah, you see Farouk was just coming down, braking for the corner, braking for the corner, tries to go down the inside, just hits that inside retaining wall in the entrance to Canada, and just takes out Peterson, who was an innocent bystander. Nothing he could do there. But for Farouk especially, it looks like his day is done. And it looks also that it could perhaps be the same for David Peterson there. Well, never say never. We've just seen a replay there and we can see that um, Farouk just under break and came and hit the wall, very close to the walls in Road America. And they uh, just took poor, unfortunate um, David out and they both ended up in the kitty litter. Could have been worse. They could have gone straight through the kitty litter into the wall. And, you know... Coming down through those kinks, the walls are very close, absolutely no room for mistakes there. Even after you get through the kinks into Canada, you've got that wall on the inside, and the tyre barriers are very close, so if you get into the gravel, you know, it's not going to stop you that much. You're likely going to hit that wall in Canada, and it's very, very, very tricky corner right there. One of the most Absolutely. treacherous on the racetrack. Absolutely, I believe we're watching Oliver Brandt now in car number 21, who is up behind um, David Ward in the pink car of Team Pink. Certainly a very fetching livery. Oh yeah. And this is going to be uh, very, very bad for Peterson, who, leading say, the championship into this race, it looks like it's not going to get any points at all here. And Fruits already apologising, but, you know, tough days for both those two drivers. Well, but, you may have certainly apologised, but I certainly saw um, him exit the gravel, pushing David out the way again. I don't want to start any sort of gossip. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too, but for... Maloney, he's got himself about an eight tenths of a second lead right now over David Ward, he's inherited second position, and Oliver Brandt, who's right behind him, and these three drivers have formed a nice breakaway now. Um, two seconds, almost, is now to the next car. Well, they're, they're trouble-free, really, aren't they? They've just got to put their foot down now and just hope that um, it's a completely different race when they start catching up with the four GTs. And he's, it does look like that coming off the final corner, Maloney's got such good drives that come down into num turn number one. But then you see David edging closer, and that's a little bit more than you see in the normal condo effect. But you've got Oliver Brandt really, really pushing him. And as far as those two drivers, I'll be thinking, well, should we fight for position now or should we see if we can catch Maloney and then fight about it when we catch them? Well, absolutely. I believe, I believe in uh, round one, uh, Mr. Brandt was a... Uh it did not finish, he did not complete the first race, so he has a lot to sort of make up really, he has a lot of points to try and claw back over the other leading drivers in uh, GT1. And you did see Brian trying to make a move around the outside now, turn number 5, very difficult place to try and make a move on the outside. Didn't quite manage to make it happen, and all the time that these two drivers are fighting, they're going to be allowing Hickman in 4th and Hickens in 5th to start closing that gap, which currently stands at about 3.5 um, seconds and a little bit of change. And a little bit of change. It is interesting. I think in five and six you're going to see a lot of uh, positioning for run-ups to the other corners as well, especially out of six where you were uh, quite a 
a little bit of a straight and hurried downs, a little kink to the right as well. So he's certainly looking to try and pull some time up there. Oh yeah, to try and, and see... pull himself a move into into carousel. Oh yeah, and if you get a good run on someone out the end of the carousel through the kinks on your way down to Canada, you can see a couple of moves being made there. But there's only one line through the carousel, and the last thing you want to do is time you move too early, and you're going to have to check up a little bit, which completely ruins your momentum all the way down towards the end of the lap. Oh, absolutely. I can see in uh, in the GT2, is it in the GT2, sorry, in the Fords, we've got a bit of a fight in uh, 23rd and 24th position with Dave Geimer in uh, one of the Team Sharks and uh, Daniel Kirsten, car number 59. They are uh, nose to tail and they've been joined by Stefan Coppens. And All this stuff sort of going off, off camera, really. And in the Corvette, as you can see, we're riding with um, the number 11 machine of Robert Lowry right now, and he's got Christian Nelson really hassling him as he come down into one. Doesn't look like he's going to get a pass made there. Just trying to put a bit of pressure, see if he can make a mistake and do this good old switch over. But four cars out, well, three and a half cars, four cars almost, all in a running of in about a second and a half of each other there. And it'll be interesting. One driver slips up, they can very easily lose a good three spots right there in an instant. Oh, certainly. They are um, a twitch away from each other, really. You know, one of them could uh, make a mistake and the others have a, have the complete run on him as they go up the start finish straight. And it is a possibility if you have got, you know, a teammate around you with the way the draft works on these cars. You could see if you try and line up and push a driver around the outside. That is possibly the only opportunity you'd have coming into these big stopping positions to... Uh, make a move on the outside line obviously the preferred option is to try and make a move on the inside but if you've got a teammate and the driver ahead of you is driving defensively then you could try and use that to your advantage because there's some very long straights here at road america some of the longest straights you do see in the entire iRacing service well you'll have to be brave to do that william well, we can see them all bunching up now and fight in the corners five and six we're just coming up to six now we're going under the corvette bridge And I believe um, Stefan and Mark Bird, they have pretty much a similar livery. Are they the same team? Or have they just got the same body shopist? Um, I'm not quite sure about that. I will find out and get back to him. You see Gaima there locking his brakes up. Um, just before he enters the carousel, lost a couple of attempts there. And he's got Stefan Coopins right behind him. And this is what I'm saying. Now he's got the chance to line him up, coming out the carousel, seeing if he can get the draft as they come down through the kinks. And very bad place to, you know, have a bit of an issue because you don't want to lose that momentum going into the carousel. Well, the kink is a very, very scary corner to go through. So it's certainly one of the corners we class in racing is a bravery corner. Oh, yeah, it's right up there with the likes of Air Rouge, um, the 130R over at Suzuka. And you see the four GT drivers especially have to break going into that corner. I was doing a couple of practice laps here the other day and in the four GT it's especially scary. Well, they are a heavy old beast of a car, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Follow um, the traditional American method of put lots of horsepower in it and worry about the turny, twisty bits later on. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's good for, um, for Road America. As you said, there's a lot of straights. And there's a lot of straights that's uh, followed by quite tight corners as well. So. Oh, yes. You don't actually get into a position here where you have a uh, long straightaway with a then sweeping corner afterwards. So... It's a lot of, you know, stop, start, stop, start, but you've got to be so good on the power coming onto the straightaway and so good on the brakes coming into these corners if you're going to continue any form of momentum on that lap. OK, I believe we're watching Robert Laurie now, um, who is in eighth, and Christian Nesson, who's in ninth. Cool, that's a lot of cars having a good, good old fight there. And you see both of them kicking up the dirt there on the inside of that corner. You want to try and maximise all the curbings, all the things you can, to try and gain that extra little bit of speed. And it's very slippery on these curbs, though, so these drivers okay, a lot so of time. Okay, sorry, so sorry to interrupt. We have an overtaking da manoeuvre. Daniel Kirsten has taken dive guimers, and uh, Stefan Coppens is up uh, right up behind him now. I think they made a mistake in corner number five. David ran a little bit late, doing that uh, locking up of the brakes you were on about earlier. But I interrupted, so I apologise. It still looks like it's a good battle. We've got the camera on Dave Grimer now. We'll see if he uh, makes the same mistake. Well, I think we're looking at a replay. Here we go. So in the corner number five, lock, lock, lock. He's pretty, pretty well not to, uh, not to lose that, really. Not, and just lit the rear tyres up trying to get back on the circuit. 
and as soon as you get off the track the main thing you want to do is try and keep it as steady and smooth as possible so you don't spin it around or you know jolt it so you spin into the wall and then you just want to get back on track as quickly as possible but you've got to be careful once you do because you lose so much grip in your tyres especially with this new tyre model that you've got to take it easy for a good half a lap afterwards so that you can kind of rebuild that momentum and get yourself back in the game while at the same time building back up that heat on the tyres and getting rid of all that debris well, wise, wise, wise words. So, so currently, um, we'll run through the top five of each class. We have John Maloney in first in the GT1s, David Ward in second, Oliver Brown in third, Gary Hickman in fourth, and Neil Heggins, whose father is watching. Hello, Mr. Heggins, or Daddy Heggins, I now call you. In the GT2 class, Kimo is in first, or he's in 16th position overall. Eric is in second, Toby Bushell is in third, David Jordan is in fourth, and Victor is in fifth, Victor Budnek. I think we're still watching Dave Grime now. I, th I believe, actually, that the series leader, um, David S. Peterson, has, has indeed pitted and withdrawn from the race. Which is going to be a big, big shame for David. Um, you get 25 points for a win, and they award points positions all the way down to 15th. Um, solitary points for finishing in 15th. But that's a good number of points that you know, he's been thrown away right there. And thankfully, he's got the rest of the season to gain that up. But 25 points is a big hit this early in the season. OK, the, uh, the pink Corvette has yielded and Oliver Brandt has gone past David Ward. Now for second position, big move. And we were talking about Oliver Brandt before we came on air earlier on. And he is one hell of a really good aggressive driver. Um, we don't know what the connection is between him and Nico Brandt, um, who I don't believe is racing here today. But you can see in that 91 Vitaphone machine that he's a very, very solid driver. And he likes putting pressure on other drivers to, you know, either force them into a mistake. Almost kind of be aggressive so that when you do make that pass, the other driver is just going to yield it to you. Absolutely. I think we're going to look at another battle between... Uh, Mr. Bushnell, uh, who is all the way down in 19th position, and he is, I think he's just passed, in fact, either David Jordan, or David Jordan has always been in 20th position, but they are, they were less than a second away from each other. And I do believe, sorry to interrupt, that we have got David Peterson in the booth. Um, David, um, do you get a copy at all? Yeah, I hear you. Hi, that was... Uh, bit of an unfortunate accident there for you. Um, you're running really well in second, and then all of a sudden, your race just ended in a heartbeat. Talk us through it. Uh, yeah, well, uh, let's see. You know, I was just trying to get myself to, together. You know, it's always, uh, it always takes me a while to, to really get into my groove at the, at the beginning of the race. Uh, and it's starting to be able to catch up to Mahoney there. Uh, <laughs> and then just at the end of the Canada corner, here comes, uh, the car just slides into me out of nowhere. Uh, I barely even saw him coming. I didn't really have any time to react or anything. Looking at the replay, I'm not sure if there was any way I could have avoided it. Hello, David. It's Bob. Um, you're absolutely right. You were indeed a passenger for that, I'm afraid. Uh, he, just, he just lost control under braking, hit the wall, and I'm afraid you were the uh, unlucky chap that was in the way. Uh, ever so uh, upset to see you out this early, mate. Yeah, I was really looking forward to this race. You know, things were, were looking pretty good for it. Um, I, I was hoping that I might be able to take pole, but those guys are awfully fast, and they edged me out. Um, so it was going to be fun having the, having the battle during the race there. Um, but, you know, it's racing. Stuff happens. Um, Baruch, I, I'm not quite sure how to say his name, Manzar. Uh, he, he immediately apologized on the server. And, and you know, it's an accident. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at him or anything. You know, as long as it's nothing intentional, it's just this, this sort of stuff happens. And was Canada um, the corner, you know, that you were most worried about coming into the race? Um, obviously very tight as you approach it, and obviously you've got the um, possibility if you do, you know, lock up and go straight on, that uh, you could be into the wall, or was there any other corner that, you know, was your key point that you wanted to be careful through the race? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of corners around here that are trying to kill you. 
Canada is just one of them. Uh, I think I struggle the most with the with the kink, actually. Uh, that one's a really scary corner where you're at full speed and you have to be really committed getting onto the gas. And you're never quite sure if your tires are going to give up and put you into the wall that's just three feet away from the edge of the track. And if you're watching right now, you can see um, we're riding with Kimo Suman right as we speak. And he's got himself a, about a four-second gap now to Eric Veldorf, who's second in the GT2 class. But, David, coming into this race, you were the series points leader. And you've obviously lost a good number of points that you could gain in this race. How are you going to bounce back going into week three? Well, I think I'm just not going to worry about it too much. Um, you, know, you, you get four drop weeks in this series, so this is just going to be a drop week for me. And it just means that uh, I'm going to need to be that much more careful and not have not get out of race again. And does that ever play in the back of your mind when you... So I believe the eight car is off on the back stretch. Um, We'll go to that moment tell you that is Juice van der Hoot. Um, but does that play in your mind after you get, you know, one bad race at the start of the season? Does it take you a race or two to get over it, or is it just a case of, you know, each race is to its own? Well, I think last season, um, the, the first race at Elton Park, I, I did all sorts of practice getting ready for that, and then I just stuffed it into the wall entirely on my own, not even near anybody. Uh, in the, the first half hour and I was so gutted at the time um, but now I've kind of got that to look back to that hey that's the way I started the season and hmm, I won the championship at the end so you know, I guess it'll be okay okay before we let you go um, who do you think you should pick for the rest of this race now as far as the G1 cars are concerned um, well I'd have to vote for my teammate John Maloney uh, he, he's certainly been looking very, very strong in practice, and uh, you know he didn't end up with very good turnout at Watkins Glen, but he was catching up to me at one point, and I, I think uh, he had dropped out of the Corvettes for a while. He was doing the 4GT, I think, and uh, he's only just recently gotten back into it again, so he's just kind of shaking the rust off, and here we are, you know, in the second round, and He's real tough. <laughs> um, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us, then, David. Um, bad luck again. Hope to see you again next week. Yeah, you'll definitely see me next week. Well, take care then, David. Um, while we've been talking to David, uh, there has been a, f a few bits of action going on. We have noticed Juice off the circuit. He's back on the circuit now. Juice is a chap that's been uh, struggling a little bit this weekend. He's not had a lot of practice time, and he has been uh, certainly trying to get the right setup, um, the fixed setup he's had. He's, he said it's very, very stable, but it's about two seconds slower than what it, what it should be or what everyone else is doing. So it's, uh, it's not punishing not punish too them. much. And you can see right now we're looking at um, Ian Rogers in the number 29 Talk Creek Racing Machine, that bright green rear end. And he's really, really pushing. He's in sixth position right now, and he's... Trying to catch Neil Hackins in fifth and Gary Hickman in fourth. Um, got about a second to uh, um, gain up on that, but he's doing a good job right there, Rob. And, you know, it's at that stage of the race where your tyres are warm, you know, you know where you are. And if you want to push, now's a good time to try and put a bit of distance between you and the cars behind coming into pit stops. Oh, certainly, but it's also the, uh, the time of the race when you can switch off as well. I mean, you're certainly a glass half full chap, one very much a glass half empty. You've got to keep that concentration in. And certainly you've got to not forget your pit stop. Oh yeah, and um, John Maloney is actually only about 12, 13 seconds behind catching um, Chris Partridge in the GT2s to put him a lap down. So we are going to start seeing in the next couple of laps some lap traffic come into play. And that's where it really does get interesting. You know, you want to try and find the right place to make that move. Um, otherwise you could lose a barrel load of time, but at the same time you don't want to be too aggressive Otherwise you could end your race and the race of the person you're trying to overtake and this really is where it gets tricky isn't it Rob? Absolutely, you don't want to um, commit the four GTs that you're lapping into anything anything too sort of drastic on the 
on the switches, on the left and the right switches and the kinks and those sort of corners. You really want to use the straights to uh, just to power past the four GTs. And Nick, um, Oliver Brandt even in the 91 Vita phone machine is really catching Maloney now. Only eight tenths of a second behind at the line. And as Maloney comes in to start lapping these GGs, sorry, um, this is where Oliver's going to be looking for that tiny little bit of a gap to try and take the lead here. And it's going to be very interesting to see whether or not Oliver is going to play the aggressive card or just see. And if you see the GT just nicely lets them both out of the way. Let him get on a bear race. He's got nothing to fight for rather than just, you know, track position and pride right now. But it could get interesting as these two continue to work their way through lap traffic. Absolutely. And Chris Partridge is about to be caught by the, the pink car of David Ward as well. So I hope he shows the same courtesy. I'm sure he will, actually. He's a very fair, fair race driver. And as you said, it's all about racecraft. Sports car racing, mixed class racing is a lot about racecraft. Craft. It's not about the one lap wonders and the guys that can really sort of put the put one lap in ten really fast it's about just being steady and making your way through the through the crowd and knowing how to lap slower cars sorry just to interrupt you there um the 91 machine william paneer went off the corn ford carousel he's lost a lot of time i believe he has hit the wall and he's just trying to cruise it back down towards pit lane uh, yeah you can see he's got some severe left front um, damage to his bodywork there um, so he's going to just try and get back into pit rain, see if he can get some repairs. Thank you, spot, and I wonder if um, everyone sort of gets past him all right, really. We're looking at the first two drivers now. They're quite close. They're just going to the start-finish line. They're just going to go up the hill. And we're on board now with Oliver Bran, and just to see a lap on board of one of these drivers is always a bit of a breathtaking sight. As they come down to turn number one, 175-ish miles an hour as a break into turn number one. Very, very tight corner. You want to see if you can get on the power as quickly as possible here without losing that back end. Bring it down into two. And he's still catching Maloney. He's only four times behind now. Again, another tight corner. Single file through here. Try and use that runoff area on the left-hand side to come down into this long straightaway. And you notice, Rob, there's not actually straights all the way down. There's always little twists and turns, you know. To keep you on your toes so you don't really ever get the chance to breathe as you come down into the first real big braking zone here turn number five certainly you've got to keep an eye on uh, where you need to be on the circuit any given time really and um, also gives you the chance to properly place your car when you're following people through get the draft and just keep yourself awake really if you look at the circuit diagram of Road America you just think oh, it's just some straights followed by some corners but there's about 15 or so corners on this circuit and uh, you don't see them until you really sort of sit in the car and drive it. Oh, that was a close one there. As you see the lapped car, just as Maloney and Bran. And Bran's going to try and go around the outside of the carousel here, I believe. Not quite going to make it happen on Maloney, trying to capitalise on the stake. Coming uh, out of the carousel. Although, saying that the carousel does have quite a late corner, just where you see that little bit of rubber, you know, just where you see the curve, you can take it quite late and then just sort of cut it to get the, to get the straight line speed for that next uh, that next straight. And this is the last real big breaking point on the track, Canada Corner, one we talked about so much. As uh, you see, um, Nico right on the rear end now, Maloney's, they come through the last couple of corners. This is a tricky uphill corner, you can't get on the power too early here because the gradient change. And then just here into the final corner, you see the tarmac changes, and if you hit it at just the wrong point, as you see, um, Brandt there getting a little bit loose off the final corner. That tarmac coming into the last corner, just as it changes, is where you don't want to hit the brakes. Otherwise, the grip level as you go between one lot of tarmac to the other completely alters the balance of the car and really, really makes the driver's life a handful. I tell you what, there are some fascinating battles going out throughout the race. We oh, sorry, we have a crash of 31 car off on the backstretch. That is Adam doing? Kell there. And he's said, low. he was riding quite high. Yeah, and you see, coming out of Carousel, he's completely fine. And then it's that famous kink corner one we talked about already. Enters it just a little bit too hot, gets onto the rumble strip on the outside of the corner, and just spears right into the wall. And tough luck for Adam, because he's running eighth in time in the GT1 class. Yeah, that was certainly an unfortunate incident. 
Where is he down? Is he down? Is he dropped down into 14th or so now? Is he? Or is he down lower than that? Um, he was 14th at the flag, but if this race is over and you know, after such an impact, I believe it probably would be. He's going to probably be classified 16th. It is now. Um, probably be 15th in class. So he might just pick up a solitary point there in the championship. No, he certainly looks to be uh, back in pit lane. And, and the yeah, chopping light stone. And the battle on track still really is between these top two drivers, still separated by less than a second. John Maloney in the 07 car, Oliver Bryant in the 91 machine. And these two drivers aren't giving an inch at the moment. And this race could be lost or won on how these drivers come in and out of pit lane. No, I tell you what, I'm very, very impressed with Oliver Brandt. He is really, really charging hard. Do you reckon he's running a lighter fuel load, fuel load than uh, Mr. Maloney? Um, not too sure. I mean, we've had half the race already. Sorry, half an hour of the race already. So, by my calculations, uh, pit sequence will normally be about 46, 47 minutes into the race, I would suspect. So, unless he'll be pitting in the next two or three laps, these two are probably going to come down on exactly the same lap to make sure they can make it to the end. It'll be interesting so, to see whether or not all of his tyres start dropping off being stuck behind the dirty air of Maloney for so long. Certainly has been um, certainly burned out of a few corners. Uh, he, he may well be uh, using his rubber a bit, bit more as he's catching another back marker. Yeah, that is Sasha Rape. He's um, already a lap down. He scored overall in the 28th position. Um, and you see, this is a tricky part of the corner uh, of the track to try and lap a car coming under the Corvette bridge. It's single file through here, and it's going to be a point. You know, if Oliver wants to make a move, now is his chance because they're not going to be able to clear him until about now. As you see, Sasha moves to the outside lane, lets both the drivers pass and get back onto the racing line. And it looks as though Oliver's just going to continue staying behind him, pushing Maloney into a bit of a mistake. There. Absolutely, and I'll tell you what, it took a few corners to get past, and um, I wonder if David Ward's going to be held up as much, because he could have really, really used that to, to close the gap on the first two guys. It looks like he just wanted to drive off, coming out of the carousel perfectly. Um, he might have lost about half a second, but not that much, but yeah, this is completely what we were saying earlier. In this um, mixed-class endurance racing, it's how you navigate traffic the best. Um, yes, a little bit comes down to luck, but at the same time, if you can find a gap early and have cooperation from the drivers and you can gain yourself you know a second here a second there and over the course of a fuel cycle that could be a good five six f and i'm just having a little look down the uh look down the grid i believe we just go on board with toby toby who is in who is in 17th and was third in gt2 and just to answer your question there, David Ward actually gained almost an entire second um, over Maloney and Brands, and that puts the gap down to just under three seconds. So your top three driver is separated by three seconds here in the GT1 class. In the G22 class, it does look like that Kimo Suleman is just driving away from the GT2 field. He's got already a 10-second gap over second place Eric Veldoff in the GT2 class, and Toby is in third. Uh, further about seven tenths of a second behind. Yeah, Kimo really has form of um, being able to really drive away from people. It's sort of fantastic to watch. We've got some pretty good battles going on at the moment um, in GT2. I'm watching uh, Peter Kamen now, who's uh, very, very close to the number 12 car of Victor Budnak. And... Eric and Toby and David Jordan, they're right on track together. So, again, one mistake from either of these, you know, it could put them back, you know, one spot, two spots, or they can completely lose a draft generated by these cars going on the straightaways. And that would just mean they'll fall back quite considerably in the longer run. Absolutely. This is, an, this is going to be an interesting battle between these three guys. And let's look at um, where they where they finished in the last race. Victor, uh, we're looking at Eric. Oh, it's Kimo's taken Bart. I think Bart Moonin's had a moment. He's had a Moonin moment.
And looking back at Watkins Glen, I mean, Eric Eric finished uh, he finished 11th. So he finished. He's doing a lot better than he did in the last race. And hopefully he can pick up some valuable valuable points here. And sorry, um, away from our screen, we noticed that um, at the end of lap 14, Robert Laurie pitted there. So he was on one of these two-stop strategies. Um, and we believe that there's another driver in pit lane now. That is the number 42 machine um, into pit lane. So that's Bart Munning also into pit lane. So a couple of drivers seeing whether or not they can, you know, do a two-stop here. See whether they can make that work. But... It depends, you know, on whether you think you can gain those extra 15 seconds on a two-stop strategy because it's such a long pit lane here. And even though you're saving a lot of time not having to sit down and wait for the fuel, such a long pit lane, you know, and you have to do it one more time. Um, it really does take a good driver to be able to maximise those opportunities. Well, I'm not entirely sure Mr. Laurie's... Um visit into the pits was entirely volu voluntary you know I, he's dropping i don't know I, th I don't think he's in there fueling is he um he pitted on like 14 it didn't look like he had any on-track incidents at all so oh that's interesting that's another uh unsolved mystery of the tfr super cup and the yo-yo battle between Maloney and Brandt is continuing, and Brandt's fallen back to just over a second behind Maloney. And it does look, every time they go through traffic, um, sometimes Brandt manages to catch up, sometimes, you know, Maloney looks like he's going to pull away. And this time, Brandt hasn't just dived down a single car gap that was there, going to Canada Corner. Um, didn't lose anything, really. Might gain about a tenth or tenth and a half. But it's very close between these two top drivers. Absolutely. I, I wonder if it'd be great if this keeps to the end of the race. If these guys are this close, or even closer at the end of the race, that'd be fantastic. And you know, if, uh, I'm wondering if Oliver Brand feels that he's in a more comfortable position being the chaser rather than the guy out front. Because he's able to, you know, potentially dictate his pace a little bit more, knowing where he can, where he doesn't need to push. But at the same time, he has dropped back a little bit over the last couple of laps. So as I was just saying earlier, he might have just, you know, started to wear these tyres down a little bit. And that might give Maloney a little bit of a chance to run away and hide a little bit before we come to pit stop. Which has happened in about um, six, seven, eight minutes time. So in about three laps time, about lap 21, you see drivers coming down pit lane. And we can see David Ward. Uh, he's just got past that back marker. He's trying. I think he may have lost that additional second that he caught up earlier. Oh yeah, he's lost that and a couple of more. Um, it always seems to be when the leader comes by, everyone's so keen to jump out of the way. But then, if you're not in that lead group and someone else, you know, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult. Or it could just be luck, you know. They say where it comes down to where you catch people on track. These drivers, remember, in the GT2 class, are having their own battles, and they're not just going to dive out of the way for everyone all the time. And we're getting close to the halfway point now um, and as we talked about so much Loney is still leading this GT1 class or for Brandt 1.2 seconds behind now in second position David Ward in third and then you've got a big gap uh, 20 seconds between David Ward and Neil Hickens in fourth and Ian Rogers um, rounds out your top five in GT1 although Mr Hickens and Mr Rogers are fighting they are very very close on circuit I just wonder if um, if they're just driving a train, really. You know, just sort of keeping it nice and clean, just to, just to get pit stops out of the way. Certainly don't but, want to go into the pits with any damage. Oh, yeah, definitely. And in the GT2 class, uh, as we've talked about already, Kimo Suman is just driving away still. That gaps up to 11 and a half seconds now to Eric Veldoff in second. Um, Toby Bushell is in third in the GT1 class. David Jordan's in fourth. And Wicker um, Bubniak is in fifth in the GT2 class. Uh, the gaps, you know, comparative wise, about similar between the top five in the GT2 and the top five in the GT1. Oh, we've just seen the uh, David Jordan behind Toby go very, very close to his bumper on the braking. It's that corner number five again. It's a real, real sort of humming. And when you just after that long straight, and you want to just get down into the lower gears to to go around it. 
Oh yeah, and once you come up to lap drivers, I do a little bit of endurance racing uh, in HPD, and coming down into these big braking zones, you need to remember that if you're lapping, a, for example, a GT2 car and you're in a GT1, they're going to be getting on the brakes a little bit before you, so the last thing you want to do is be right behind them as they start braking, otherwise you're just going to, you know, end up slamming into their rear end and putting you both out the race. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. At the same time, if you're in a um, in a slower vehicle getting lapsed, and you've got your eyes in the mirror, you're looking at the guy behind you, thinking, "What's he going to do? What's he going to do?" You don't miss your, you don't miss your own break point, you know, because you can you can end up in the wall. Oh yeah, and as we said before, these GT2 drivers are still racing their own race. They're not just mobile chicanes for the GT1 cars to navigate. And these drive so often you hear the debate over. Should a GT2 driver move out the way? Should the GT1 driver just try and find a way by? And at the end, I think it's just a little bit of cooperation between the two classes. And we've seen today that, on the most part, it really has been good cooperation between the GT1 and the GT2 drivers. Absolutely. I mean, the president in, um, in AMLS and Le Mans as well is just, uh, just the slower cars drive your own line. The faster cars, it's up to you to get past them, you know, nice and cleanly. Oh, yeah. And thankfully, even though this is a very narrow track, um, thankfully that there is ample opportunities to make a pass you're not going to get stuck behind someone for a tremendous amount of time as you would uh, for example tracks like Infineon Raceway absolutely it's really really built for multi-class racing this circuit um, oh, yeah. it is very very flat very quite off camber as well it's not like Watkins where you can get sort of sucked around a corner it's very very flat and um, very very narrow and we are approaching about Two and a half and three and a half minutes away from the halfway point here at Road America. Round two of the TFR um, Sprint Cup Challenge Trophy. I'm Will Vincent. Uh, alongside me is Rob. Hi, Rob. Hello, Will. And we've been thanks rambling on half guys. the race. Yes. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We are absolutely halfway through. Not quite, but getting close to it. Okay, we've had... Um, but maybe the main talking points is, uh, is the series leader, Dave Peterson, getting... Um, collected, let's just say, down at Canada, cor Canada Corner early on in the race by um, Farouk Manza. That's put him out very, very early on. And he's given John Maloney and Oliver Brandt, David Ward as well, the opportunity to really get some points on the board. And you should see Oliver Brandt is closed right back up to the rear of John Maloney, coming down into the kinks again. It does seem to be that Brandt is so much stronger in the second half of this track. Yeah, because of the way it is, it's single file through the kinks. He doesn't seem to ever really have the opportunity to make that manoeuvre stick going down to Canada. Oh yes, yeah, a very um, brave corner to go around when you're quite when you're really quite close to someone. I'm just looking back in the GT2 now, and uh, Toby and uh, Toby's Toby Bushel's door to door with um, with uh, Eric. Now they're just coming up to the first corner. You might want to follow car number one. In fact, Toby in the TFR car has now passed Eric. And that is some pretty beautiful paint scheme for the TFR drivers. Um, you, it's, it, you can tell which driver it is by the rear end of the car. Each one carries everything, something ever so slightly different. But, um, it's, yeah, Toby's doing a really good job up to second position in class now for the GT2s. Still got a long way to go if he's going to try and catch Kimo Suman, though. But... We've still got pit stops to go. We've still got half the race to go, you know. 13 seconds isn't out of the question. Absolutely. We're just watching the, um, well, we've maybe seen the replay of the pass now. It's nice and clean. you just got the drag up. You've got a better exit of the uh, last corner. Better drag up the hill and just alongside. And it was just a case of, yeah, to be honest, mate, just sort of let me past. We don't want to have an accident in the first corner. Yeah. <laughs> and going back on the previous point, very nice paint job, but it just ain't that pink car, is it? It, it's not that pink car, David Ward, and you see it throughout a number of iRacing series. Um, there always seems to be the one driver that paints his car pink, and strangely enough, it's always that one driver who you know when he comes up behind him, they're going to find a way past you relatively quickly. Yeah. And don't forget, you can join in the conversation on Twitter. Let us know what you think about the early race accident involving... Um, sorry, I've just managed to get my words messed up, David Pettersson. Um, or what you think of the TFR liveries, or what you think about our pathetic commentating. Um, Absolutely. I've forgotten the hashtag, you're going to have to tell well, me that one though, I Rob. I commented the TFR, or hashtag, 
TFR Super Cup. I've commandeered that hashtag. So feel free to just put that on your messages, send us some abuse or send us some uh, thoughts of, of what's going on really. It's a great, great race to watch. Oh, and sorry, um, just off the corner of our screen, Nico, uh, Oliver Brand, I keep on saying Nico, Oliver Brand has passed John Maloney for the lead. So at the line, Oliver Brand is going to be the leader as we start lap 22, exactly halfway into this race now. Unbelievable. He really is a hard charger, isn't he? And he's, uh, it's been the case of these two drivers for the entire race. Um, and I believe it was happening as we were talking um, into turn number one about a lap ago. Um, unbeknown to our screens, we were working against the GT2 drivers. And Oliver Brandt just went down the inside, nice and clean, into turn number one. Job done. I don't think um, for a minute that it was a, a case of resignation from Mr. Maloney because they've both been driving very, very hard. Do you just think that Mr. Maloney's going, OK, I might have a pit stop on the next few laps. It's just, you know, just get in nice and safely. Possibly, yeah. Or maybe he's trying to pressure perhaps um, Oliver into being a bit more aggressive for the last part of the stint. Um, you know, fuel shouldn't be an issue here, but... Um, you know, Oliver's been able to probably cruise behind Maloney for the large portion of this race so far. Possibly save himself a gallon, maybe, here and there. Um, underneath braking, turning in, so... I believe Maloney could be saving a bit of fuel right now, and making sure he can hit a fuel number. That's very, very gamesmanship. That's very deep thinking, Will. Well, Maloney has been a lot slower in the last lap or so, so... It... Interesting to see what happens in the course of these pit sequences. Oh, absolutely. And they're uh, looking very, very far ahead. Do you think we're going to get anyone run out of fuel? I don't think so. It's too... Um, judging what, Unless I've completely got my fuel number wrong, I was told earlier that the GT should just about be able to make it no hassle if they hit the halfway point. And then the um, Corvettes have got slightly better fuel mileage. Um, so... Um, I don't think they will be. I don't think that will come as an issue as much as it would at tracks like the Glen. Well, we can certainly see a few people, uh, a few Ford, the G Ford GTs coming into the pits, just getting a little, uh, getting their refueling done and maybe a tyre change. We'll I think with uh, this length of race, you will be taking tyres. OK, you'll see um, a lot of position changes in the ticker above the screen. And I can also clear up um, one of the mysteries of earlier. Rob Laurie has indeed retired. That's interesting. And it looks as though Toby Bushell is coming into pit lane. So, so he's in pit lane as we speak right now. And as I said, I think that all of these drivers will be taking tyres. Um, you see, Toby did take tyres in that stop, if I'm correct. And just because of the fact it takes so long to fill the tanks up with fuel, taking tyres is done and dusted in about 13 14 seconds you might as well take tires because you've got to spend an extra 15 seconds in pit lane to fill the tank up and has he uh, actually got past eric in the pits in one of the fabled undercut maneuvers well no he was actually ahead remember um a couple of laps beforehand he did make the overtaking maneuver on eric um to move into second on class so whether he's just consolidated that positions more um up for it. And the 88 Look, car, sorry, um, you go ahead Rob. Oh yeah, looking towards the grid, the 88 car, William Pino has indeed had a little bit of an incident. He, uh, he's going to be in the pits a little bit longer than he may have originally intended. And that's the second incident there for Pino, because we saw earlier on that he had lost it, um, I believe it was coming out of the carousel about 15 minutes ago. Oh okay, well sometimes uh, the car can twitch. There is a quite a close wall as well on the exit which can cause a bit of trouble if you do lose control of the car maybe you just want to get the power down a little bit too early and it, it just doesn't play ball and that's one of the things i've seen so often you know you just run on that outside curb and the inside part of that outside curb this is you got to bear with me here the inside part of that outside curb is you know fine but as soon as you get onto the outside part of that curb it always just wants to um, snap you loose and send you straight into that right-hand side wall. So it's literally a matter of inches can be the difference between you having the speed and being out the race. 
yeah, certainly it's a very short, um, short uh, distance between success and failure once it does go wrong. And the gap settled down now between Maloney and Brandt. Um, it's 1.5 seconds at the line last time by between Oliver Brandt running in first in the GT1 class and John Maloney in second. Um, so whether or not Maloney was just saving a bit of fuel, had a bad lap, a bad couple of laps, but the gap seems to have settled down just the other way around as it's been for the first half of this race. Well, I, can th I think I see David Ward um, in the pits. He yeah, that's right. In, uh, in third, I think he's down to ninth now. He's still getting lapped. It's interesting that the uh, the GT1 drivers, the only person in GT2 they haven't managed to lap yet is uh, is Kimo, which they're going to be coming up, coming up to in probably about a lap or so. No, for, sorry, less than that. It looks like they're doing that right now. Oh, sorry, I take that back. It does look like they haven't passed him just yet. I've got my time completely wrong there. You can shout at me are, later. <laughs> they are very, very close to doing it though. Unless, unless the pit stop intervenes. Yeah. So pretty much it does look like everyone's starting to come down pit lane for this one and only tire, um, fuel and tyre stop. Oliver Brandt still staying out. Keep an eye on Maloney, see whether he comes down this time by. And indeed Maloney is coming down pit lane. Maloney in the 07 is coming down pit lane this time by. And slows it down to that pit lane speed limit of 45 miles an hour. Um, very, very slow pit lane here. Not only is it one of the longest, it's also one of the slowest pit lanes as well. It's long and horrible as he comes down into pit lane. Fortunately, we know you can't see this on your screen, so we'll just let you know how the pit stop goes. Make sure nothing untoward happens. Um, coming down and still getting towards his box, he's at the very end of pit lane, so he's got a long way to go. But once he gets back out, it's easy pickings for him to get straight back out onto the gas. But, yeah, he's completely fine into his stop, so no issues on the way in. And uh, Oliver Brandt's turn number five now. Uh, we'll see how long he, his strategy needs him to carry on before he, he comes into the pits, and then we'll see what the, uh, what the pace of John Maloney is like and see if he manages to get a little bit closer. And the tyre change has been done, topping off that fuel. I say they'll definitely all be good to go to the end of this race now. It's just a case of whether some drivers are gamble by taking a couple of gallons left, seeing whether they can be a mathematician on the fly. And Maloney's out of the pits now. And you say, for Maloney, he's got the advantage that he can get straight back onto the gas. Doesn't need to use the pit speed limiter at all coming out of pit lane. So he can save himself, and um, we worked out this before, about two and a half tenths of a second by doing that, being able to accelerate straight up. And certainly, yeah, it's, you've got a, it's a funny few first laps on cold tyres as well, especially the new, new, new tyre model. Oh yeah, the new, new tyre model. And Oliver Bryant will be keeping an eye on him, seeing whether he's going to come down pit lane this time by. Um, we should be expecting to. He must be running on fuels, uh, fumes almost. As I said, he must have saved a bit of gas earlier on, but he stays out for another lap. Brave, brave man. Brave, brave man. Well, I just wonder how much fuel he was saving sat behind, sat behind John Maloney. And if he's really pushing now, I mean, he did, what, a 2 minute one oh, um, two minute one point three list time by, just gone. And he really is still putting that pressure down. Well, I tell you what, if he's running on fumes and he's pulling 201s, that's it. Uh, with, with the tyres in the state of his tyres, it's pretty good. Indeed, yeah. We're looking at the stats. He has pulled a faster lap than uh, faster lap than John Maloney's race fastest so far. So he's uh, he's doing very well. And his time has been consistent all the way through. Just looking at his lap times now, um, his last few laps have been at, um, lap twenty one two oh one point six six five. Lap twenty two two oh one point six six five. Um, and then a 202, a 201, a 201, so very consistent lap times to the thousands in a couple of cases. Well, suddenly getting very, very close. The battle for second looks, uh, looks like it's between Nell and uh, Kieran Peace. Uh, Kieran Peace has been a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing, really. I, I don't know if that's the right, the right phrase to use, because he didn't qualify too good, but he's clawed his way all the way up now, so... Uh, 
he's doing quite well. He was one of the ones I tipped to be a dark horse throughout this race because I've been told he's quite quick. Remember though, Peace hasn't pitted yet. We expect him to come down in the next couple of laps and Grant had to go all the way down to the inside there and kind of corner to make that move. That possibly cost him about half a second, which is not what you want, just as he's about to make that dive to the right to come up the hill into pit lane. We're keeping an eye on him still and surely he's got to come by this time by. Surely. And he does. Oliver Brandt is going to be coming into pit lane all the way up the hill, late on the brakes as possible. You see that little wiggle as he slows it down, 45 mile an hour into pit lane. And now we're going to have to see why he feeds back out in relation to John Maloney. Oh, this is real sad. This is real uh, squeaky pants time. Squeaky bum time even. I'm getting all my sounds wrong today. And Oliver being the last of the one in, you know, the last thing he's going to do now is overshoot his pit box because, you know, even half a second of flicking it back into reverse and getting back, you know, that could be the end of the race for him. And he's perfectly into his pit box. And as we speak, uh, Maloney is going through the kinks in towards Canada Corner. And uh, he's quite he, close. Yeah, he's David, entering. David Ward's not too far away from him. No. David Ward is only about a second behind as they come out of Canada into the second to last corner. I feel like I'm on top gear right now. Um, coming into the final corner right now, Oliver Brandt Neist is out of pit lane. and He's got himself a huge advantage there. It looks as though at the line, Oliver Brandt is going to have about a six second lead. Well, that's a fantastic turn of, uh, turn of pace from, uh, from Oliver when he's running on fumes. We'll see how long it takes him before he, uh, before he feels comfortable in the new tyres and the, uh, the change of weight which, which uh, a fuel stop brings. i tell you what, it could be even more than that because Maloney's only going into turn two as we speak and Oliver Brandt is already out of turn number five. So Oliver Brandt is just putting that hammer down and he's got the opportunity to walk away with this race now. And a quick uh, stop and go from Kieran Pease as well. So that was good spotting. He hadn't done his pit stop yet. He's just joined, rejoined the circuit down into corner number one. So we believe now our spotter is telling us and our director is telling us that everyone has pitted. So it's now, it's a hard charge unless we've got any uh, two stoppers till the flag. And I think that the way the pit sequence works, most people, I say most, should be on a one stopper. There's one or two people in the GT2 who because of the fact they you know might have had an unscheduled pit stop earlier on might have tried to short fill for the second part of the stint. But I think everyone's on a one stopper to go to the flag. And um, you might be able to correct me here, but I believe Toby is in first place in the four GTs. Is uh, is Toby pitted yet? Um not quite sure, I'm having a look now, but it does look like you did money to get past Chemo on the way into pit lane. So it's that all really changed. Is, that really is a turn out of the books, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, all changed then. Um, we'll go for the GT2 class first. Toby Bushell in the number one TFR machine is leading. Chemo Zimmerman is in second. Eric Veldoff third. Um, David Jordan in fourth. Peter Kemeiter in fifth. Wicker um, Bubanek in 6th, Daniel Christen in 7th, Stephen Coppins in 8th, Dave Gu um, Geimer in ninth, and Mark Bird in 10th. Uh, by the way, I apologise if I pronounce your name wrong. Please tweet us with the correct phonetic pronunciation. Um, and in the GT1 class, Oliver Brandt is leading by... Oh, we had to just go out of the way there. Um, almost, almost collected a back marker as he goes into five. Oliver Brandt leading by a magical 17 and a half seconds over Maloney. David Ward in third. And sorry to interrupt, the back marker that uh, Oliver Brandt had just passed, it just spun coming out of uh, number six. Yeah, sorry, that is Bert Munning in the number 42 machine. And that's a lovely paint job. What's that? Stars and stripes, beautiful. Um... But, sorry, so Oliver Brandt in first, John Maloney second, David Ward third, and then from Ward back to Heckins, you have a good, almost 30 seconds gap um, to Neil Heckins in fourth, Kieran Pearce in fifth, Ian Rogers sixth, Gary Hickman seventh, 
Just Van der Hoeveel in 8th, Christian Nielsen in 9th, and Morgan Moran in 10th. Okay, I believe we're going to go to a replay of a crash. In number car 45? Yeah, and you just see how he felt like he had to dive out the way for um, Oliver Brandt. Holds the outside light, possibly just gets on the power a little bit too early, going under the Corvette bridge, and just loses it on the inside curve, spins it around, but manages to just keep it away from the barriers, spins it back around, on his way. Well, it's suddenly good he came out of that with no damage. Lucky one there. So, we're, we're up to lap now. I think they've lapped the last... The last um the last place Corvette driver that's currently still running and um, so we're now up to we've lapped everyone apart from nine other vehicles yeah just 10 cars on the lead lap and we're working what effectively is lap 28 I believe for the GT1 cars and we're having another look at the replay of Burt Manon as we speak and that 42 a, a beautiful paint scheme for um, that stars and stripes i did something similar back in the day when i used to play another sim and always a popular paint scheme with these corvettes yeah with them with them being american cars um you, you would have thought and you just see um the 69 pink car of david ward also to lap there on money so, David Ward right now, his only opportunity right now seems to be to try and catch Maloney in second, because it looks like Branch is dancing off into the sunset. It's going to be an interesting close to the race. I believe that um, Ian Rogers and Gary Hickman were quite close. In fact, there's, there's only a couple of seconds between 6th and 8th. Meanwhile, we're looking at the GT2 fight for the lead. <laughs> And Toby Bushnell has got Kimo Suleiman right on his tail. Um, Kimo in the number 51 Aeon machine. And Toby Bushnell in the number 1 TFR car. And these two are going hammer and tong as we speak. Um, Toby now pits up right away. He isn't going to let um, Kimo pass without a fight. But the gap we saw Kimo put out at the start of this race. It's could just be a matter of time before he makes a move. Well, he's certainly been very, very rapid all, um, all, all race. And he had, a, he had a longer pit stop, so he had a lot of work to do in the second half of the race. And I think it was not, not really a surprise he's caught back up with Toby, so it's going to be an interesting few laps. But I don't think it's going to take that long, because he really, really is quick. And just to explain, the, I believe that um, Kimo must have lost it coming into pit lane because his pit stop itself was 3 minutes 13 seconds that's from the time that he stopped came back out and did a complete tour of the circuit whereas for Toby that was only a 2 minutes 57 so a 16 second gap um, between the two of them pit lanes and whether or not he'd caught a little bit of damage I'm not too sure well I guess that's, uh, that's going to be another mystery this one might be um not completely unless we ever talk to Kimmy after the race. And I'm just having a look back and I think he might have actually sped coming to pit lane. Oh, that's bad. We can't do that. You get an instant stop go penalty for that, don't you? Yeah, and luckily you get to take it there and then. Um but I'm just having a look here and he slowed down going into pit lane and then he accelerated. So he hit the pit lane speed limit to to come down. And either he, he hit at the button and, and the speed limit didn't connect, or he accidentally turned back off again. That's a very cost egg there for Kimo. He'll probably be pinching him off right, right now, just as, he's back, just as he's up behind Toby. He'll be kicking himself. He'll be looking every every lap he's stuck behind Toby. He'll just be probably quite irate that he messed that up in the pits. Oh yeah, definitely. And that's one of the critical parts of the races. We've talked about it all race long now. As we're riding on board um, with Kimo Summerman. I'm going to try and say his name right at least once in this broadcast. I believe it's Kimo um, Summerman. But if I'm wrong, connect me. Absolutely. Um, and, you, and you can abuse him um, on Twitter on the hashtag TFL Super Cup. I've certainly already in them abuse for, uh, for mentioning David's name, David S. Peterson, I believe it is. But we so say we're riding a more Kimo, and you just try and see whether or not he's going to make a move down on the inside of Canada. He doesn't seem to be close enough as they go through the Kingstone. It does seem like if all the parts of the racetrack 
it does seem to be that Kimo is slower on the way into the big braking zones. But you see but here, he's putting that pressure right back on as we go into the final corner. Not quite going to get the gap. He was about car length closer. He could have made a move to the inside there. We can see them going up the um, up the pit, st pit straight now, up the hill, alongside the pit wall. I just think Kimo's been a little bit a little bit sensible on the brake, and he's not trying to get too close. Oh yeah, but we're just about 25 minutes, just under 25 minutes left in this race. You know, it is about to be go time. You see, he's looking to the inside, but again, brakes early, doesn't want to commit himself just yet. I'd say That's give it 15 minutes and he'll be taking every braking opportunity he gets. Well, that was also quite psychological. You, see, you can see Toby didn't fully close the, close the hole there. He left a little bit open. He certainly didn't drive up on the apex like he normally does. And he's going to, he's just looking to the outside there. You see, just a little bit of out part here. It's like, okay, this to the outside. It's cool, I'm just going to go to the inside. And then, as you see here, he's going to try and make a move on the inside. Not quite going to get it, though. Going to be side by side as you go through this corner. And it looks as though... He just... Ah, oh, it looks like Toby's going to manage to live to fight another day. Close the door there through Harry Downs. Fantastic racing. Fantastic racing from both drivers, because they certainly left each other enough room. Oh, yeah, they left each other at least a lane, but probably not much more. And this, this carousel is going to be interesting, because they're just sort of toying with each other at the moment. I think Kimo's just trying to pick his spot. Yeah, and for Toby, he was very lucky that he managed to stay alongside after they went through the Corvette Bridge, down into the Hurry Downs. If he managed to, if he wasn't side by side, then Kimo would be just driving away right now. <sighs> Here's a conspiracy for you. I'm pretty sure that's a TFR Corvette now. Just come into Lapham. And you see, this is what I say, if you're the Corvette driver, the last thing you want to do is cause a bit of an incident just as you're starting to have, you know, as you get up to the fight for the GT2 lead. No, and you certainly don't want to come together with a, uh, another, uh, another driver in your own stable, especially if he's leading said, lead, said race. And back in the GT1 class, um, Maloney is dropping back. He's dropped back by about a second further on Oliver Brandt since the last time we spoke about him. David Ward is about a second behind him himself. It keeps on going to and fro, that yo yo ness effect we're talking about with Maloney and Brandt earlier on in this race. Um, with Maloney um, being able to, in some ways, to get through traffic better, and other times being held up slightly and enabling um, Ward to get a little bit closer. And I believe we're just about to see a replay of uh, number seven, which I believe is Christian Nisland, who came together with a, uh, a GT2 car. Or are we? <laughs> oh no, well, I'm afraid we don't have that replay available, but I, uh, I'm, I assure you it did happen, it's not my imagination. As uh, Christian goes off circuit again, um, he's back on straight. Oh, for the, the lead, for the lead! Oh, they touch! Toby Bushnell and Yano have touched uh, right there, lap 31. Toby manages to continue. And it just looked as once again, like on the lap previous, Yano goes down the inside under the, after the Corvette bridge. Toby doesn't turn into him, but gets a little bit loose coming off the corner and just turns and tags Yano right there. Well, do you think Kimo's going to be out? Sorry, not Yano, Kimo. I'll take that back. Yeah, Kimo. It does look like Kimo is out. He stopped on the racetrack just before the carousel and unfortunately what has been a great battle has ended in disaster there for Kimo. Well that is unfortunate. He did just lose control of the car, Toby did. It just turned him into Kimo, which is a shame because they've been very good at leaving each other enough room. It's just a shame that uh, it was a bit of a loss, loss of control there. And Kimo now is going to be kicking himself even more because if he didn't get that speeding penalty, he wouldn't have been in a position where you'd have to try and force manoeuvre on Toby. And while Toby lives to fight for another day by the look of it, we'll see whether he comes down pit lane with any damage. But Kimo eats game over. It's certainly in the last 15 minutes as well, or 15 or so minutes. Very, very big shame it's happened this late in the race as well. And I tell you what though, Kimo was very, very close to losing it himself. Um, as they go over the curb, Kimo was using just so much of it that he actually came up a little bit into the middle lane and and it was almost lucky that Toby had got loose himself because otherwise Kimo might have 
just brushed up a little bit into Toby. So, hard racing and unfortunate circumstances there for both drivers. That was a great in car we've seen there from Toby from Toby's uh, Ford GT as well. You can see him just the back back end step out a little bit more than it looks like it was going to do um, on the external view, the camera view, the TV camera view of the car as well. So I believe Mr. Ward, Mr. Maloney are quite close for second place at the moment. Yeah, um, the gap is down to under a second now. Um, with Sorry, I believe actually Ward's managed to get Yeah, Ward's managed to get past Maloney. I don't know when that happened, but Ward is into second position and um, Maloney is into third. It happened in this last lap. So well, we've Maloney... not updated the uh, the standards yet on the, well, from what I can see. We'll have um, to see a replay of when that happened. I'm just having a look back now, but oh, sorry about that. Maloney gets loose. Um, sorry. Um, just drive straight on into turn five. We said that's a big breaking point, and it just looks like he completely missed his braking zone. And Ward just drove straight past there. Well, there's certainly a lot going on. There's certainly a lot going on in this race today. And unfortunately, this is uh, we've not been able to get in-car footage from um, Maloney all race long. And it's one it's so unfortunate. Um, he just loses it on the entrance, the corner number five, which you see him coming back down towards now. Just literally outbreaks himself, goes straight on, has to turn the car hard to the left, bounces up and down a little bit on the gravel, and just unfortunately lost the position. But he's trying to get right back on his tail. We're going to try and get a replay from the 69 cars um, of you, um, rear view camera. But you know, Maloney's closing right back up. He's, he's not going to give up this without a fight. He had the lead for the first part of the race. Push back to second. He, he's not going to be happy if he finishes on the final step of the podium. I'll tell you that one. And I believe we've got a uh, well, the TFR uh, races on Twitter on using the hashtag TFR Super Cup. Simon Roberts, who's just, uh, his wife's just given birth to a lovely lady, a lovely girl. And uh, congratulations, Simon. Shame you can't be with us today, but I believe we'll be back in the next round, next Saturday, at Suzuka. What well, Suzuka is one of the true driver's tracks. Um, one of my favourite tracks um in the world full stop not just here on iRacing but it is one very technical and difficult track Suzuka um so many different elements to it you've got to piece so much together in all one lap your setup's going to have to be you know perfectly suited to so many different twists and turns and breaking points going to be one hell of a great race I'll tell you that one now no I can't absolutely can't wait and you see Maloney is putting that pressure on David Ward He's now sat in second of the GT1s. And uh, by your clock, um, you are keeping time on an iPad today. That's not a product placement. How long have we got left in the race? Um, we have, <coughs> by my watch, which could be completely wrong, and if it is, I completely apologise, we have 17 minutes and 37 seconds. Oh, excellent. And this will be slightly different to the uh, to the display that you viewers will be seeing. So don't worry if you see any white flags or any checkered flags or anything like that. We will talk you through how many minutes left in the race, and just to bring this race to a nice little close for you. Oh, you see Maloney again, almost gets loose there. Sorry to give people a heart attack, but Maloney just coming out the hurry downs, car almost snapped loose to the right of him there. And he's lost himself about another second, and all that time he's been spending harassing David Ward, who himself got loose a little bit on the Harry Downs, um, is lost. And I, th I tell you what, I think John saw David get onto the grass a little bit and thought, okay, now's my chance. Just put the power down a little bit too early, and the car tried spearing to the right. Well, you've got to be wondering what's going through your head. It's the last few minutes of the race, and you're really, really wanting to try and claw a place back from David. And you're just trying to edge a little bit hard. Oh yeah, and the thing is, although you can probably estimate, you don't know exactly when that white flag's going to come, so you want to be in a position that you can make a move at any point. Um, you don't want to be in a position, you know, where that white flag comes, just 
a little bit of the wrong side of 90 minutes and you lose a lap's worth of opportunities. Or, if you're David Ward, you're hoping that, you know, it does come the right side for him of the 90 minutes and he has a lap left to hold off Maloney. Well, I think they're quite enjoying it at the moment. I think David's in a very, very good position now for the next, for the next few minutes of the race. I can see, we can certainly see uh, John kicking up a little bit of dirt as he's trying to run that extra, uh, extra wide, you know, trying to squeeze as much speed as he can out of the car. And one of the two stoppers, um, Morgan Moran, I believe he was a two stopper anyway, is back down pit lane. Um, he might, sorry, he, he had an off, I believe, in the last lap. So he could be coming into pit lane for repairs. Um, a very long pit stop for him, though. So we'll keep an eye and see whether he does indeed rejoin the track. But in a position that he is in, he is the he's got about a lap gap to uh, mine and behind him. So he should just be able to keep the position. And I believe so. He was involved in an incident in Canada Corner um, involving the zero free car. Of Christian Nilsson. And I don't think we'll see a uh, replay of that. Although I can see that Christian and Juice uh, on the last lap were quite close. In fact, they were under a second away from each other. Car number three and car number eight. So we'll see what's happening there. Maybe Christian's had a problem. He's had to drop back a little bit. No, Christian was involved with the 20 car. Coming down into Canada Corner. Um, the free car gets on the brakes. Both of them twitching a little bit. And um, the free car just turns in a little bit too early. And collects the eight, both of them bouncing over the gravel trap. I don't think any of them got too much wall damage, but you know, the damage you get from hitting another car is gonna slow you down quite a bit. Absolutely, and we can see now that Juiced is um, making the most of this. He's right up behind Christian now. Christian's probably thinking, How much damage is done to my car? How much is this gonna affect the handling and performance? And let's not forget, these two drivers are possibly gonna get lapped in the next three or four laps. So they, if if um, Juice is going to try and find a way past, he wants to do it now, um, rather than having to be stuck behind him when the um, Oliver Brandt and David Ward come up to lap them and have to deal with them that way. Well, there's certainly a lot more drama left in this race. A lot of stories to tell. This is oh, yeah. over till the fat lady sings, as they say. And, and with 15 minutes to go, sorry, less than 15 minutes to go, um, Oliver Brandt is still leading the um, C6R GT1 class by 17.3 seconds, uh, you know, I tell you, Oliver's probably cruising home now. He knows he's got such a big gap, he's not going to have to stop again. So, 17.3 um, seconds back is David Ward. John Maloney right back on the tail of David Ward after that off about three laps to go. Um, in third, Neil Hickens is now a full 55 seconds behind the leader in fourth. Kieran Peace will run like your top five in the GT1s. And moving over to the four GTs and the GT2 class, Toby Bushnell is in first, Eric Theodoff second, Dave Jordan third, Peter Kermit fourth, and Victor Bubnek in fifth. Um, but still, Rob, the biggest stories of the day are that the two drive, well, two drive, one driver from each class, who we really expected to have a strong showing in this race, both out. It's a massive, massive load for their title challenges, but David did tell us earlier they have four, four drop weeks they can use, so maybe we'll see how it how it pans out at the end of the 12 uh, week season yes for those of you joining the, um, the stream just now hello very warm welcome to you and um, where the hell you been for the last hour 22 minutes stop watching saturday night prime time tv it's rubbish um but in the gt2 class kimo Suramen um was involved in an accident with race leader in the gt toby bushnell um about 10 minutes ago now um, just coming um, under the Corvette bridge, the two got together. Toby totally got a little bit loose coming out the corner, and unfortunately, um, Kimo's race has ended. And uh, in the GT1 class, the biggest story of the day was David Peterson, who on lap two was involved in a, such an unfortunate accident as the free car Christian Nilsson is off track again. Uh, he's really suffering from some damage now. He's in a position where it's going to be hard for him to even get back to pit lane. He might have to see whether he can call it back ground. And going back, Peterson on lap two. Unfortunate accident. There's a car off in front of him. Um, that's William Penier off in the Ford GT. I'm going to get this story out, I promise. David Peterson on lap two, coming down to Canada Corner. Um, Farouk Manzir just 
eases it under breaking, hits the inside retaining wall, and wipes Peterson out. But two real challenges for this race in each class out of the question. But we've still got some great battles going on in both classes, haven't we, Rob? Absolutely, absolutely. This is um, this is some good racing throughout. I'm just trying to see if we've got any real battles. Going to be surprised. I think Christian's dropped down now. It's so uh, you can certainly see his car crabbing around a little bit. Except Same with William Panier. Um, William oh. Panier is going to have to come down pit lane this time. He had a horrible second half to lap. It doesn't seem like he's got any grip anywhere at all. Yeah, he's certainly finding it very hard, and uh, he's been in the pits uh, more times, about three or four times in the race, hasn't he? Oh yeah, and I tell you what, if William doesn't come down this time by, which um, we'll, I'll have a look as we come through, um, the fight for second is going to be right on his doorstep, and William stays out. He does stay out. He did think about coming down pit lane, he didn't. So, it does look that in the next lap or so, David Ward and John Maloney is going to be catching him, um, but there's another two or three GT drivers in the mix also that's about to be lapped. Well, this is an additional uh, this is an additional problem now for David, who uh, who is being caught by John, and um, I should think this is a, certainly the fight to watch for the rest of the race because it's certainly going to cause it's not over yet, I don't think. Oh yeah, I think John was running a higher downfall setup um, for this race. Um, you know, starting from the point, um, leading the first part of the race, I think he wanted the higher downfall setup so he could drive off the corners. Mm -hmm. And give himself a nice little gap so that it would make it so difficult for drivers overtaking him coming into a corner. And you saw that also in the fact he was able to be a little bit later on the brakes. But now he's stuck in third um, with some traffic you know, in front of him. He doesn't seem to be able to make the braking points um, and make the move down the inside. So I've got a feeling that Maloney's probably running a higher downfall setup than the cars ahead of him. And that was very... Uh very edgy there trying to take that back marker Willem because yeah oh, Maloney's oh. off Maloney's off yet again he just completely loses it down into under the Corvette bridge and I tell you what it does look now with just over five minutes about seven and a half minutes left David Ward can get into cruise control now oh, that's, that's that's good for him because I I've been watching David a lot in the, in the practices running up and he was certainly helped out a lot uh, with the setup because he was very very unhappy with the uh, the setups he was he was running so he did take a lot of advice from a few fellow drivers as well so it's it's good to see him doing so well and you know it's one of the trickiest parts of the track it's so often not talked about coming under that Corvette bridge but if you look very carefully you see there's just been a replay there you see the tarmac changes just about as you enter the apex of the corner and it seems to be that Maloney is always off line coming into the corner even though maybe he thought he didn't pass the car properly, he wasn't checking his rear mirrors. But he got onto the racing line very late and then tried to turn it hard left. And I don't think he, once he hit the brakes, the car wanted to turn left on him at all. Yeah, this was certainly very... I, I don't think... I think he was looking in his mirrors a bit too much. And he was a bit too much awareness of what else was around him rather than what he was doing. But the gap now between... Um, I'll have a look now. But the gap between... Um, Warner Maloney is up to five seconds and it's going to take a real feat for Maloney to close that in what three laps? Yeah, I think uh, it, it might be dead and buried unless there's any any comings together with bat markers or any any big mistakes now. Yeah, and I think now that battle's over, most of the field is spread out. So while drivers are still going to be pushing to force drivers ahead of them into a mistake, um, it could tighten up at the end coming into the last lap or so, but. For the moment, it looks as though the field strung itself out a little bit. Okay, we'll just um, see what else is around at the moment. We'll just see some people uh, lapping back markers. Oh, Peter Kerma in the number 33 machine just avoids it off the wall. He needs to keep an eye on his mirrors, though, um, in Canada Corner there. Peter um, Kiermaier in the number 33 machine running 14th in the GT2 class. Just lost it on the entrance to Canada, I believe. Um, having a look at the replay now. Just, yeah, breaks way too late. Sl Try sliding the car around the corner. And that liquid molly machine just wasn't going to make the turn. I think we can see in the battle developing Jordan now is catching Eric as well.
and the gap between the two of them is closing dramatically. Um, it's one point. Uh, every time I look back at it, it's closing 1.5 seconds. So he's going to be right in his tail as he comes to the last lap of this race. Has Eric got a little bit of damage on his car? Do you think? Um, possibly. Um, I'm going to have a look, but he might have a little bit of damage. I believe he was involved in something earlier on in the race. He does seem to still have a little bit of right side cosmetic damage, but it's not that bad by the look of it. But he is still almost tiptoeing a little bit. His lap times aren't what they were early on in the race. He's uh, about half a second slower here, half a second slower there. But it's still consistent lap times, but I think that David's just really started to fire the pressure on. I mean, he set his fastest lap two laps ago and was only a tenth slower um, in the lap that's just been. So he's really, really closing that gap. As you see, it's down to 1.3 seconds now. Just watching David Ward coming back up against a few back markers now. See how much this slows him down uh, in comparison to uh, John. Let's see if John catches him a little bit. They're about five seconds off each other at the moment. Wow, David really, really there. Taking a bit of a risk um, on that lapped car. Um, not quite a dive bomb, you know, but while the car ahead got out of the way, he really just had to use all the track he could get while lapping Daniel Christensen. I think our spotters tell us of a, uh, an off-track incident with car number three. Christian again. Oh, he's certainly not having a very nice second half of the race, is he? Oh, no, definitely not. Um, it, it, sometimes, you know, once you get into a position where you go off track once, you try really pushing to get back into your groove, back into your rhythm. If you push a bit too hard, too early, it just becomes a chain reaction, you know. No, absolutely. We're looking at... Are we on the white flag lap yet? I think we are. We're not quite on the white flag lap. You can see the white flag on the screen, but the white flag hasn't been shown just yet. Ah, see, I'm getting ahead of myself. You are getting ahead of yourself. We've got a couple of minutes left, but we are getting towards a white flag lap. And Jordan is still closing in the GT2 battle, which, to be fair, is the, probably the closest battle on the track at the moment. Um, David Jordan is really trying to close down on an Eric Verdoff for second position in the GT2 class. And I, be I believe we see a very late retirement in Chris Partridge, who's, uh, car who's position 23 now. Yeah, and that's a shame for Partridge. He wanted to pick up a couple of points. And I think he got a couple. Um, he'll be classified with two points, I believe. Um, I'll have a look through the um, results. No, sorry, he'll be classified with four championship points, by the look of it, for this race. But unfortunately, he'll lose out on a couple more. Oh, and you see that, under pressure, um, Eric just went a little bit wide coming up the downs. So, um, having to take a bit of a defensive line through the carousel. But David Jordan's going to be right on him as they come out of the carousel. And they're coming up to Cannon Corner now, aren't they? Which is... Uh, it'll be tired, tired drivers in that race. And uh, <laughs> they may not be wanting... To, well, one of them certainly won't be wanting to have a fight this, this late in the race. Oh, yeah. Uh, doesn't look like David's going to make a move this time by, but he's lining him up to make a last move, Banzai, if he needs to. They go up the hill now for the start finish line, under the Caterpillar Bridge. Eric moves over to the right and then back over the left, I think he's sending a load of his pit, pit wall. Breaking now into the first corner. And if I'm correct, I believe this could be the white flag this time by. Um, Oliver Brandt in first position, still in the GT1 class, leading David Ward by 19.4 seconds at the line. Could be actually slightly higher. Dave Maloney, I believe, has given up the chase now. Uh, he knows that finding five seconds in the last three or four laps was going to be a very mean feat. But um, I think that he's just decided, you know what, Take it over to Zuka next week. Try and catch it right then. For now, well done in your second position. Absolutely. I wonder what happens now. But is he going to go? Is he going to try and push, push Eric to see if he makes a mistake or to see if he, see if he just sort of runs a little bit wide so he can get stuck in for the last sort of last lap or so. 
Uh, I'm not too sure. I mean, you can really see them closing, and if they come into the carousel this time by, it's going to be really interesting to see whether David can line him up to put pressure on him as they come through the king, Dan's Canada. He's getting very close, but he's having to check up a little bit as they go through the carousel to make sure that he doesn't get into the back of him. And it does look to come out of the carousel. Eric's a little bit better on the gas. Well, we, we've got the kink now, Will. This is the kink here. Throw it this in. This is the kink. Way out. Run it wide a little bit. Kick up a bit of dirt. Two car lengths. I uh, don't know if he's close enough. If he's going to make a move, it's going to be a very late lunge. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. They're both on the brakes at the same time. Tried to cut down the inside, though. Very you good. You might have a run on the line here. You might have a run up. Yeah, as they come into the second to last corner. Look at that, how close it is. Oak's going to have to drive defensively into the final corner, but not quite. And it's going to be a run up the hill now. Yeah, you saw him uh, just just twitch on the uh, on the line. And right behind him, Brand is coming up to the final straight. And I, we believe that this should be the white flag now. So, Nick, Oliver Brand, if this is correct, should be coming by now to complete the race. Nope. One more lap. We lied. Sorry for the premonition there. One more lap for Oliver Brandt. This is the white flag this time by. So, for the GT2 class, I believe they'll have two more laps to go. Unless they get, manage to get themselves lapped this lap, there'll be two more laps to go. Well, that's, that's good, because I think this, this battle now can go on for hours and hours. It's certainly a great one to watch. Oh, and you see David Jordan driving around the outside there to come into five, and he's going to go wide and lose all forms of momentum up the... Oh! Well, he's shown his car to a bust. Yeah. It is now or never. I mean, after 90 minutes of racing, I mean, there's a good couple of points between second and third. So, you know, gaining momentum in this season, you are going to want to take the opportunities that are presented to you. And for these two drivers, they've got nothing to lose. I mean, you get 20 back and 16 for third, so, you know, those four points could come in handy at the end of the season. And certainly with the uh, no-show from John and, uh, and Kimo's unfortunate incident, you can see that there's going to be changing up the top, changes up the top easily. Oh, yeah, definitely. And if I am correct, I do believe that Peter Kermeyer will take the lead of the GT2 Championship if he manages to stick in his fourth in class position. And we to below as well. It's an, that's an excellent finish from those two guys. Well, does he know to fight him for position? We certainly gave that Corvette a little bit of a wiggle now, but poor old David Jordan's got another lap of this now. And there's... Eric has gone. Eric has gone long. Eric has gone long on, on, turn, on corner number five. He's off the circuit. He's spun. Oh, was, indeed, that was David Jordan. My bad, sorry. Sorry about that, I had the wrong button pressed there, but David Jordan that time by... He tried to do exactly what he did the lap before, um, going on to the outside into turn five, tried making it so he knew he'd have to use that runoff area, but unfortunately just went a little bit too high and lost it. I think we uh, need to give uh, David a bit of respect there because he certainly, I didn't think he was going to catch that, that, that little bit of uh, flick when it came back on the circuit. He certainly rejoined the circuit in a very Dukes of Hazard fashion. 
And in the DT2 class, Toby Bushell is going to come across the line any second now. We're riding with him now. Toby Bushell to win the GT2 class here. Gets the 25 points for him in his championship. And I tell you what, that was a great race by Toby. Unfortunately, the accident between him and Kimo earlier on. But still, a great race there by Toby. Yeah, fantastic race. And a, and a shame for, for John as well. Oh, um, sorry, for, for Kimo. Yeah. Eric Vidoff takes second position. David Jordan manages to hold on to third. But... When all said and done, top three in each class, you know, produce some really good racing. In fact, great racing throughout the entire field. Very few incidents. Uh, I think we've only had a couple of multi-car incidents throughout the entire race. It's very, very high quality of racing on the uh, in the TFR Super Cup, hosted by Talk Freak Racing and Glacier TV. So I just need to get myself a quick sip of my water, and we'll run through the um, positions. But Rob. If you had to pick a driver of the race, we'll go on BBC on ourselves for a minute. Who would you pick? Well, that's a, that's a difficult question. It's got to be Oliver. He won, and he's also charged very, very hard throughout the, throughout the race. I certainly didn't see him finishing in first place at the start of the race. Oh, yeah. And also, looking back, Kieran Peace did an uh, excellent race as well. And um, uh, Daddy Heckens would be proud to see Neil come in, uh, in, in fourth place. So, just to confirm the results, after 19 minutes of intense racing here at Road America, Oliver Brand comes home first overall and in the GT1 class. David Ward, 21.2 seconds behind. And second, John Maloney, one of the favourites going into the race after starting from the point, was in third. Neil Heckins, fourth. Kieran Pearce, fifth. Um, Ian Rogers, sixth. And Gary Hickman wins the award for being the last driver on the league lap in seventh. And then one lap down, you have Jost van der Heuvel, Christian Nielsen, Larry Kripp in 10th, Bart Money, we saw him had a bit of a moment earlier on in this race, but halfway through in 11th, Morgan Morand, Philip Arth, Robert Laurie, Adam Kell, Carl McGurk, David Pesson, and Farouk Manza are your retirements for this race. However, Adam Kell will pick up a point for being the 15th and last driver. Sorry, the 15th driver classified in the race. And, taking a very deep breath, um, in the 4GT GT2 class, Toby Bushell wins the race from Eric Verdoff in second. David Jordan, you saw him put on a valiant effort for those last 10 laps. Unfortunately, losing it two from the end. And that number 85 machine coming home third. Peter Kiermaier in fourth. Wicker Budnick in fifth. Daniel Christen in sixth. Stephen Coppins in seventh. Dave Meyer in 8th, Mark Bird 9th, Sasha Rebate in 10th, Simon Guy Meyer, Dave's brother, in 11th, Chris Partridge in 12th is your first real retirement, with Willem Panier, Kimo Suriman, uh, who we talked about in that fortunate accident while batting for the lead, um, Mario Vlaskic and Jasper, um, I can't say that name, Running Wag, and Norbert Wolf are your retirements in the GT2s. Well, that was a, that was certainly a good attempt at Jasper's name. Um, what, a, what an excellent race! And I believe we've been joined by by Toby as well, the winner in the GT2 class. Well, welcome, Toby. Well done. Thank you. Um... Can we have a, a little bit more microphone for you, Toby? I can't really hear you. How's that? First that, that's not better. That's and beautiful. The first question is going to obviously be: What is your take on that? incident coming under the Corvette bridge uh, just seems to be that your um, car just got loose coming off the corner. Yeah, I just, um, I ended up giving Kimo a bit more space than I intended on the inside and then just got back on the throttle a little bit too early and um, obviously you've got to adapt your, your, your pedal behaviour when you're taking a different line to normal and just failed to do that but fantastic racing with Kimo and uh, we got through almost exactly the same way in the, the previous lap, so really exciting. Obviously, uh, sorry to Kimo for the, the contact. And until then, it had been a really close race between you and Kimo. Um, I mean, what was your thoughts when you found out that you come out of the pit sequences in first after Kimo's stop-and-go penalty? Shock <laughs> was the first one. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. I felt like I absolutely nailed my outlaps and inlaps 
but um, I don't know what happened to Kimo just before the stops, if he'd got mugged by GT1s or, or what happened to him, but um, I wasn't expecting that at all. On raw pace, um, Kimo definitely uh, deserved the win today. Um, but a, a great battle and really exciting in the, the first stint for me as well with uh, Eric and David Jordan. And how did it feel, um, you know, in those couple of laps before the incident between you and Kimo, you seeing him just sizing you up in your mirrors, you know, it seemed to be that he'd go down the inside but not break to see whether or not you'd leave the gap open for him and then go to the high side, I'm sorry, go to the outside into turn five and then still break early and then eventually to say, okay, I'm going to go here and make the move. Yeah, I think um, Kimo, depending on the amount of time left in the race, really wears you down. He's, he's a fantastic driver for applying pressure, and I, I could sense that he was getting less patient as the, the race was going on. But, I mean, Kimo's a, a fantastic driver, had a lot of good battles with him, um, and uh, we've got a lot of trust between each other. Um, hopefully no harsh feelings from uh, from the race today he seemed okay in the server. But... Um, it, it kind of works both ways because on, on one hand he'll uh, faint a pass um, but unless I think he's actually going to commit to it then um, I'll uh, try and just uh, give him only as much room as we need but it's uh, a lot of fun, really really intense. And uh, just, to, just to interrupt, sorry Will, uh, we can, uh, the viewers will listen to this fantastic interview from the, uh, the winner of GT2, uh, Toby Bushnell, but we can also see just some of the highlights of the races that have just gone on. Um, some fantastic sort of highlights and incidents and comings together and um, it's good, good to watch. I'll let you uh, get back to the interview, Will, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And you so see, we've, we've got the replay showing right now of the incident, the famous incident, we'll call it now, with Kimo. And, you know, is that just the issue, just how difficult it is to get onto power in these GT2 cars? I mean, I've tried it out myself and it seems to be, you know, even if it's a couple of attempts too early, you get on the power, or just maybe 10% too, um, I, I'm trying to find a word, too forceful on the power, the car just wants to snap in the wrong direction. Yeah, I mean, I've gone for a fairly conservative setup in that regard. There's some of the, the quickest setups, and actually I'd had a go with Kimo during the week, and uh, he's able to get on the power in some cases a lot earlier, and the car will rotate a lot more on the power than mine. Um, so I'm actually usually quite conservative in that, in that regard, but um, yeah, on, on raw pace, he was uh, considerably quicker and reeled me in very quickly after the, the stops. It was just a question of me trying to make it as difficult for him as uh, possible, but enjoyed some, some really good side-by-side -side moments before, obviously, the contact. And you started back in the GT2 class um, on the grid. Um, did you have, uh, you know, uh, couple of set up principles that you're going to go for the race depending on where you started I mean obviously being second you'd have pretty much majority clean air ahead of you um, only one car ahead um, would you did you choose a different setup to say if you're starting sixth or seventh in the pack no I've actually kept my car set up the same since the the previous round just a minor tweak to the diff um, firstly I was actually really surprised to be uh, P2 on the grid, I think I was about P8 or, or P9 um, last week, um, but the more, because I switched from GT1 last season, the more and more time I've had in the car, I've just felt more and more comfortable, so I'll aim to keep this set up for the majority of the season now at least, just for some minor tweaks. And um, before we have a little chat with David Ward here, I know he's sitting patiently down there, hi David. Um, what if you could pick just one moment of that race? You know that would sum up um, how you felt from your win. Is there a particular moment? Oh, tough one. Um, probably my my favourite moment was the lap preceding the the incident. Um, just some really good close battling and uh, a, a lot of fun. I didn't expect the win, um, but fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Looking forward to next week already. And 25 points in the bag, and you know that moves you quite a way up the standings in this um, spring championship standings. Uh, I'm trying to do the maths in my head right now, and it moves you 26 points. Yeah, it moves you into the top five, I think. If I'm wrong, please don't come and hunt me down. But going on to Suzuka, is that a type of racetrack you like? Um, yes and no. I enjoy driving Suzuka. Uh, I think Suzuka's tougher to pass than it is here. And we'll see it out there, but it's um, 
there's so much time to be gained or lost in the S. It's an exciting track, very narrow, um, but I don't have a great record of finishing there, so I'm going to need to get plenty of uh, laps in before next week. And especially in the twitchiness of the GTs, it's going to be another race where you've got to be on it for the entire race. You know, one slip up, you mentioned the S's, but the Dengers, Spoon Curve, the 130R, the um, Casino Triangle, you know, just one little slip up, it's game over almost there. Absolutely. Um, but thank you so much, Toby, for having a chat with us today, um, and congratulations on your win. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. Cheers for the broadcast. I look forward to watching it back. Cheers. And a, a bit more information uh, as well about watching it back. Uh, the, the replays will be able to be seen on talkfreakracing.com, and also they will be on the Glacier TV uh, GlacierTV.com, um, which is our fantastic uh, broadcasters as well. So you will be able to rewatch, or if you are now watching later, um, welcome. And uh, you've missed a cracking race, or you haven't missed it because you've just seen it again. Um, but I believe we've got David Ward now for uh, a quick interview. Hi, David. Hi, how's it going? I'm not too bad. Um, if you don't mind turning your microphone up a little bit as well, that'd be great. Is that better? That is. Um, so, well done. Um, you bought the beautiful pink 69 car home in second. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Rob, all day he's been talking about how he's not been able to make any pink car jokes. So I'm sure he'll try and throw one in in this interview. But it's been a very eventful race for you. You've had pressure, you've been putting pressure on drivers. You had Maloney all over your backside for the last half an hour until he lost it with about 10 minutes to go. Um, how would you sum up your race? I'm, I'm actually over the moon. There was no, I, when I saw the qualifying times, I didn't think I was going to be anywhere within the top five. Um, I'm really disappointed with qualifying as well. I should have been, yeah, it should have been 59s easy, and I should have been mixing it up. So I knew it was going to be a chase from there. But the race setup I had was really good. So yeah, overall it was good. I, I'm pleased. And. You starting fifth. You obviously saw that incident with um, Peterson and Farouk right ahead of you. Um, what was your first reaction, apart from close your eyes and hope that you wouldn't crash? I I was a little bit further back than um, I couldn't really see, but it looked like Farouk just tried to dive down the inside, locked his brakes up, and just speared into Peterson. I need to have a look at the replay, but from my point of view, I was like, "Wow, that's just taken Peterson out." So. Uh, two more places. And you managed to make your way up from fifth to second. There's been, it, you know, it's been a very eventful race in this GT1 class all day. Um, did you have a particular favourite moment at all? Uh, getting past John was was one of my uh, best moments. I he was I was trying to put the pressure on him for it when I saw him come out of the pits in front of me and. Uh, yeah, getting past him was, was probably the best bit. Uh, I've been told I have to kind of speed this interview up as much as I can because sure. the poor guys at Glacier need a coffee break for their next bit of work. Um, but, um, you know, those last, that last stint, you had Maloney all over you for so long until I believe he tried to go around the outside of you and just um, end up spearing off. Just I, I can't remember if it's in Turn 5 or coming out of the Corvette Bridge. But... It, I mean, how did it feel to have that pressure relieved from you with, you know, about 10 minutes to go? <laughs> it, was, it was a big relief. He was really, he was a lot quicker than me. And we came up to a GT40, and I can't remember the driver's name, but uh, I, pass, I managed to, to pass him. And then um, John tried, looked in the rearview mirror like he tried to go around the outside um, on Corvette Bridge, and he just went off the track. Oh, when I saw the smoke go up, I was like, ah, that's okay, I can just sit back and relax. And it did look so much like, I don't know if um, he didn't know if he was clear or not, but he, almost, it was so weird, he, he tried to turn right to turn left, very late, and horrible maneuver by him, but we were just looking at your relative button, hoping, like, looking at the gap, looking at the gap, um, talking to the person in your ear, saying, where is he, where is he? Or was it just a case of, you know, thinking, okay, I can cruise now. Uh, I had him on F3, and it was, uh, I was, after I seen the gap, it was about seven seconds, uh, and that it, that was enough with, like, ten minutes to go, because he wasn't going to gain any more, and he might have locked up his wheels as well, so, and, and 
cooked his tyres, so again, it's going to be hard for him to chase down after that. And going into Suzuka, uh, I'm going to bring Oliver in here as well. Congratulations, Oliver, um, on your win. Um, you're going on to Suzuka uh, um, next week. Um, what's your thoughts about the track? Um, how well do you think you're going to do that? Well, first of all, thanks very much. This was my first ever race victory in a Talk Freak Racing Super GT uh, Championship race. I'm very thrilled about it. Uh, Road America is one of my favourite tracks, so it makes it doubly rewarding. To be able to um, form there. Yeah, as for Suzuka, um, last uh, season in the Talk Freak Super GT Cup, I was racing the Ford GT round there and uh, I had great fun doing it. Quite like the track. Should make for some uh, close racing there. And back to you, David. Suzuka, track that you like? Um, I struggle there, so if I can get top five finish, I'll be happy. Okay, um, thanks so much for talking to us, David. Um, you better run away quickly before um, Rob makes some form of a pink car comment. Um, but well done on your second position there. And Oliver, again, congratulations on your win. Um, I have to say, that first stint, it looked as though that Maloney had the edge on you. But then all of a sudden, from the time that you took the lead through the pit stops, you just set a scintillating pace and ended up 15 seconds ahead. Well, I had trouble passing him. Uh, I, w I wasn't much faster than John, uh, than, uh, John Maloney, so I couldn't actually uh, facilitate the pass, really, and I, I got a run on him up towards that finish line. It's a uh, few laps before the pit stop. And I, um, I dotted up the inside and got the pass done. I had about two or three second lead to him from, that one, from when I made the pass to the pit stops. And I think... Uh, John must have missed, uh, missed his uh, pit booth for speed and speeding in the pits or something like that. Because when I came out, I had things on uh, both John and uh, David. And I've only got time, unfortunately, for one more question. Um, I've got the guy shouting in my ear telling us that we've got to go. Um, but you've said already that you like Suzuka. You've got yourself a nice 25 points in the bag in a race that um, Pitterson's had a lot of trouble in. Um, didn't score a single point today. Um, what your aim for the rest of the season now? Are you just going to try and build on this win? Um, how And what type of momentum do you think that's going to give you for the rest of the season? You know, just as you said, I'm just going to try and uh, keep the momentum up and do uh, the best I can. We have some fierce competition in the series in the GPS as well. So um, I'm just going to go into it with the uh, hopes for some more results. See what I can do about it. Don't want to don't wanna jinx it now. Yeah. Um, thanks so much, um, Oliver, for talking to us. Congratulations on your win. And very quickly, um, big thank you to Yoni and Yano, our Pleasure TV partners, for being spotted throughout the race and telling us stuff that we couldn't see. Yeah, really nice to have someone doing a uh, quality broadcast for us. And Rob, you can wake up now. I can wake up. Fantastic. Well, great interviews, guys. Just uh, probably one more thing to say about to join us for TalkFeetRacing.com. Um, the, the race at Road Atlanta, round two, TFR Super Cup. We do have, or the Glacier TV guys do have another um, race coming up at uh, 11.20 UK time. And that's the Continental Endurance Sports Car Series. They're going to race a 90-minute race with MX-5 and Mustangs, multi-class, at Daytona Road. So if you, if you guys don't want to go to sleep yet, or it's early in the morning for you, feel free to watch that. Very quickly, um, Road Atlanta... Again? Big pardon? You said Road Atlanta again. Oh, did I really? I'm in Daytona yeah. Road, ever so sorry. Losing, losing my mind, it's late here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've been asked by David, he's, as he's on the podium, he can uh, get away with this one, to shout out to minitalk.com as well. He's a bit of a, bit of a mini fan, is our, uh, our David. Maybe that's where the inspiration for the pink car comes along. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he'd get one in eventually. <laughs> and I'll save my plug until next week. All right, are we going to say goodbye to everyone? Yeah, take care, guys. Take care, viewers. Thanks for watching. It's been fantastic. Uh, this is Simon Wheel's first broadcast for TFR, so fantastic. Cheers, guys. Thanks for joining. Thanks for turning up. Bye-bye.